When we think about strong metals, whether it's the steel in a skyscraper, the engine parts of a car, or even the blade of a knife, we often imagine metal as being this invincible, indestructible material. But here's the thing, not all metals are created equal. Two very common processes, forging and casting, can take the same raw material and produce metals with very different levels of strength. So why does forging often create stronger metals compared to casting? And is one process really better than the other? Let's dive into forging versus casting. The world of molten metal, hammer blows, and hidden microscopic structures to uncover the truth. Let's get into it, right here, on History of Simple Things. First, let's start with casting, because it's one of the oldest and most widely used methods of shaping metal. Casting is pretty straightforward. You melt the metal until it becomes liquid, pour it into a mold, let it cool, and you've got your finished shape. Think of it like baking a cake. You pour batter into a pan, and once it solidifies, it takes on that shape. With casting, this method allows manufacturers to create complex designs that would be almost impossible to achieve by hammering or bending solid metal. Casting is how we get everything from intricate jewelry pieces to huge engine blocks. It's flexible, efficient, and excellent for mass production. But there's a catch. The microscopic structure of the metal ends up being different compared to forging. And this difference is what affects strength. Now, let's move to forging. Forging is a much more forceful process. Instead of melting the metal, the material is heated until it's soft and malleable but not liquid. Then, it's shaped by hammering, pressing, or rolling under extreme force. This technique has been around for thousands of years. Blacksmiths in medieval times forged swords, armor, and tools this way. Even today, forging is used to make things like aerospace components, high-performance gears, and heavy-duty tools. The key advantage here is that forging doesn't just shape the metal, it reshapes its internal structure, aligning the grains of the metal in ways that make it stronger and more resistant to cracks or weaknesses. To really understand why forging tends to make metals stronger, we need to zoom in, way in, to the microscopic level. When metal solidifies from a liquid in casting, its structure forms randomly. Crystals, called grains, grow in different directions, and small pockets of weakness can form between them. In some cases, tiny voids or trapped gas bubbles can appear, which weaken the material. On the other hand, when metal is forged, those grains get stretched, compressed, and realigned. Instead of being random, they follow the flow of the metal. Imagine a bundle of straws. When they're all neatly aligned, they're harder to break compared to when they're jumbled in every direction. Forging creates that neat alignment, which strengthens the part. Let's make this easier to picture. Imagine cookie dough. If you pour cookie dough into a mold and bake it, you'll get a cookie in the exact shape of the mold. But the inside is full of little air pockets and it might crumble more easily. That's casting. Now imagine instead of pouring, you take the dough, fold it over and over, pressing it down each time. The dough gets denser, smoother, and the air pockets get squeezed out. That's forging. The result is tougher, less crumbly, and more resistant to breaking apart. This brings us to one of the main trade-offs between forging and casting. Forging produces stronger metals, but it's not as flexible when it comes to creating complex shapes. If you need an engine crankshaft that can withstand enormous stress, forging is the way to go. 
but if you need a highly detailed metal sculpture or a component with intricate passages, casting is the better choice. It's not about one process being superior all the time. It's about using the right process for the job. So, where do we see forging in modern life? Forged metals are used in parts that experience high stress and need maximum durability. Think of aircraft landing gear, where the metal must handle the crushing weight of a plane on impact, or automotive crankshafts, which spin thousands of times per minute under intense force. Forging also shows up in tools. Wrenches, hammers, and pliers are often forged because they need to withstand repeated stress without snapping. Casting, on the other hand, dominates when it comes to complexity and cost effectiveness. For example, engine blocks, pump housings, and turbine blades are often cast because they have intricate shapes with hollow spaces. And don't forget decorative items. Statues, jewelry, and artistic designs rely heavily on casting. If you need fine detail and aren't as worried about maximum strength, casting is the go-to method. Another factor to consider is cost. Forging requires powerful presses, controlled heating, and precise shaping tools. It's labor-intensive and expensive, especially for large parts. Casting, on the other hand, is cheaper for mass production and can churn out thousands of identical pieces with relative ease. That's why manufacturers don't forge everything. They reserve forging for parts that absolutely need that extra strength, while casting handles the more intricate, less strength-critical pieces. Now you might be wondering, why should any of this matter to me if I'm not a blacksmith or an engineer? Well, the answer is that forging versus casting influences the reliability of the things we use every day. So why does forging often create stronger metals than casting? It comes down to the microscopic structure. Forging aligns the grains, squeezes out weaknesses, and makes the metal tougher. Casting, while more flexible and detailed, can leave behind imperfections that reduce strength. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.